Good morning. Welcome to My Left Ear. I'm Carrie Freeman, writer, producer, director of My Left Ear. And uh, this is Petey. And uh, if he gets on the desk with me, I try to get him into the shot because a lot of people like Petey. He's rolling on his back right now. We'll see how he behaves. But this is why I've got it angled strangely today. Um, so you can see Petey. Uh, our favorite um, YouTube cat. All right, so uh, this is, if you've never been here before, a left-leaning YouTube channel, and um, it's political, and I do psychic commentary, and I add runes readings to that. I'm gonna alter this a little tiny bit, this angle, if I can. Okay, um, all right, so, um, when I'm not doing this, I'm a change agent, meaning I see people individually uh, through Zoom or in person or on the phone, and I help people make changes. I do it through psychic coaching, uh, which is through my left ear, and runes, and uh, hypnotherapy, which I've been doing for 20 years. So if you want information, it's below. If you wanna reach me, and ask me for my um, pricing sheet, uh, I'll email it to you. And uh, I'm also an author of a book called The Comics Daughter, and I'm rewriting my good evidence book. This isn't straight, so please excuse me today. Please excuse me. Uh, and I'm on my uh, rewrite to make that book a paperback, and that'll be out pretty soon. I talk about that a lot on my Patreon channel, which I have patreon.com slash Carrie Freeman. All right. And what I do here is I pick out the news that I think is really interesting and, uh, and viable uh, to us. And I disseminate this new information and then I add psychic con con commentary. Come on, Carrie. Uh, and this is for entertainment purposes only. Uh, now, this is kind of big. Uh, Tucker Carlson is leaving Fox, like immediately. I just caught it on Twitter. Uh, people don't know the exact details around it yet. Uh, but isn't that interesting, people? We don't know what happened. Um, so stay tuned. I mean, this just, I just checked it before I turned on this recording. Um, so we've got a lot, a lot this week. So um, I picked out the runes for uh, this week, starting today. And I just want to share these with you. I don't know where my glasses are. I had glasses. You know, I'm going to put them on for a few minutes because I'm having trouble focusing this morning. And I apologize for the glare. I'll take them off in a minute. Um, so in terms of this coming week, I got the blank rune, which comes up a lot recently, which is interesting to me. But basically to remind you, it says uh, that blank is the end and blank is the beginning. Um, it's about our destiny. Um, and as I said last week, it can portend to death, but we didn't see an actual physical death last week, uh, which it talked about. But it could relate to any part of our lives or uh, their lives uh, that they have been living. Um, and the ultimate challenge here is um, relinquishing control. So <laughs> you can see, he's trying to get on his back, so I rub his belly. So one hand is on his belly right now, see? He likes that, uh, his big belly. Uh, it is the path of karma. So uh, with the blank rune, our highest dreams are held within the blankness and drawing it is a test of faith. But you know what? We've been in a test of faith for a long time, haven't we? Um, all right, so let me take these off because I can see the glare. <clears throat> so then I got initiation. So initiation is about a counsel against expecting too much or, or expecting in the ordinary way. Um, the old ways cannot repeat any longer. Uh, and even though we may feel exhausted amidst the obstruction after obstruction, um, we should look at this challenge 
as specific to our initiation. Uh, initiation meaning the changes we're going through. Um, this is when our inner beings are being shaped, shifted, and reformed at a very deep level. So that is happening right now. And lastly, uh, which is nice, makes me feel that we're going to hear some good news towards the end of the week. I got fertility. And fertility is akin to the moon. Uh, it's the intuitive part of our nature. It marks a time of joyful deliverance. And it says, you now have the strength to achieve completion. So uh, it makes my left ear uh, really believe that there's new information coming on this week. And some of it is, is like, is like a positive, all right? So let's keep an eye on that because uh, I always wanna be able to bring the positive, but there's not always a lot of positive. Now I wanna address something last week when I did the runes for Monday, they were very dramatic. And this has been on my mind. So all week long, I'm waiting for that enormous news announcement or, you know, somebody has passed um, kind of a thing. We didn't have that, but we had a lot of um, events. Here we go again. I'm sorry about this. It's it, all in my attempts to keep Petey in the show. I'm gonna do one more thing and raise it a little bit. Okay, hello. Um, so I wanna go back um, because a lot of things did happen last week. Um, Dominion won big, almost $800 million. Uh, they didn't negotiate the big apology, uh, you know, the big mea culpa, didn't happen. But they were in this to make money. And no matter what, Fox lost. And now Fox is going to lose more and more because there is um, the, uh, what, Smartmatic is suing them for even more money. Uh, and Dominion has about five or six more lawsuits also. Uh, I think with the actual hosts, okay, and some of the people that appeared on, uh, like that wacky, um, wacky lawyer. I can't think of her name, but she's not important, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, then um, the, the evil... Uh, maybe not evil, but the um, dishonest Supreme Court who've lost their credibility, they did put a hold on um, Mifepristone. Uh, and Mifepristone, I just read this, it blocks the woman's body uh, from producing progesterone, which makes the baby grow. And so that's how it stops the pregnancy. Um, so there's a hold, which is a relief. Now that is not permanent. We got to, we got to wait and see what the future holds and what this damn Supreme Court is doing. Um, now another good thing is Ron DeSantis is tanking. His polls are going down. He keeps making so many stupid mistakes and he's so disengaging, uh, he's going down like the song timber if you remember the song timber great uh also judge uh kaplan who's overseeing the e Jean carroll defamation civil rape trial um would not extend it for donald trump and his attorneys they made a big deal i mean this is kind of humorous but they wrote, Donald Trump doesn't want to, um, you know, mess with traffic or congestion in New York. And um, there's a lot going on for him right now. Let's, uh, let's um, extend this lawsuit. And uh, Judge Kaplan went, no, no. And in a civil suit, he doesn't have to be there. So there's every, the people are trying to figure out, is he gonna show? Is he not gonna show? Is he gonna try to show up in the middle of proceedings and take 
um, center stage. Now, this judge is very tough, very smart, Judge Kaplan. And Judge Kaplan is not to be confused with E. Jean Carroll's main attorney, uh, whose name is also Kaplan. Uh, all right, so there we go. So that trial for E. Jean is starting tomorrow. And that is defamation and rape. He won't go to prison for this. It just another ping in his dented, dented armor. Um, and then as of yesterday, something new came out that was discovered um, that Trump was involved directly with the steal of voting software. He was, it's coming out right now. And when there was a meeting, and I think it was with the fake, ele some of the fake electors, um, but 45, I call him 45, because it, it just diminishes him a lot, but we're talking about Trump, was in the room during the meeting. And more information is coming on that. So that's more, what, I'm not an attorney, obstruction. He just keeps, um, well, it's almost like every day we're hearing about a new uh, crime. Uh, and yes, the empty apartment next door, they're redoing the bathroom. And I just said, F it. I'm going to start. I'm going to talk loud. I'm going to grab your attention. And I'm going to keep going because I really wanted to get this out today and sometimes the download takes a while so i apologize for this it comes and it goes and what can i what can i do uh, if this is horrible let me know and i will never do it again but i felt i was late on delivering a video and i really wanted to get it out today all right so here's the thing this is new in georgia all right, and I, t I calling it uh, more Trump guilty activity. So testimony suggests that Trump was at a meeting about accessing voting software. Hello, Fanny T. Willis, the district attorney in Fulton County, Georgia, as you know, is trying to clarify Mr. Trump's role in a number of efforts to overturn his November 20th election loss uh, in Georgia specifically, um, including the plan to gain access to voting machine data and software. Amazing, right? So this, it feels almost, and I, you know, I, I'm not saying it is, but it feels like almost that the, the entire GOP is part of a RICO scheme. Like just so many people were on board for to overturn this election. And I wanna say, damn, people are stupid. So Fonnie Willis uh, alleges that, now here's the second thing that's going on in Georgia that's gonna delay the Georgia indictments. And there's word that Fonnie Willis has like at least 20, it was 12. Now they're saying 20 indictments, but this is number two. Uh, Fonnie Willis alleges that attorney Kimberly Burroughs DeBrow or DeBro, also she is um, representing these uh, Republican fake electors, also failed to notify her client, I think it's one client, of a, an immunity deal that was offered, which is an enormous lapse of professionality. Um, that prosecutors offered last summer. So Fannie Willis's office offered an immunity deal that Kimberly DeBrow did not tell the client, the fake elector. So this is gonna delay, but not for long. They're, they're trying to get her removed. And there was one other, oh, so the other thing is with this Kimberly DeBrow, she's representing 10 of these fake electors or so-called fake electors. Um, and one of them, there's some kind of ethical, 
ethical thing with one of them and she really shouldn't be representing all of them. Uh, it's like a against legal, you know, how things are done legally. So this Kimberly Bur Burroughs de Brow has two issues going and she's probably gonna get in trouble with the, um, you know, legal trouble with her degree, with her uh, license to practice. So that that's coming, all right. So this was on my mind. This is kind of like new subject on my mind because there's rumors now about Kevin McCarthy, people not being happy with him in the GOP, wanting to get rid of him. Uh, so I asked, is McCarthy gonna be gone in the next three months as speaker? So the first rune I got was joy. Uh, it's the fruit bearing branch. It says the term of travail has ended. Now that doesn't mean overall travail. It just means the term of uh, McCarthy's, you know, stint is coming to an end. Uh, they call it an alchemical moment. It accompanies new energy, which be a replacement, and that replacement could be worse. I can't think of anybody that's appropriate in the GOP to be the speaker, Adam Kissinger is gone, all right? And Liz Cheney is gone. They might have been like sane, but they're gone. So, but it says something lovely emerges from this depth. Um, then we got blank again, and my screen just blew up. And as you all know, my screen blows up one or two times during a show, uh, blank. <clears throat> the unknowable. Blank is the beginning. Blank is the end. It can pretend to death, as I've said before. It's about relinquishing control, him relinquishing control. It calls for an act of courage. Um, and like I said, we do not know who would be next. And then lastly, about this Kevin McCarthy question, constraint, the rune of constraint. And this talks about obstacles we create for ourselves. And these are obstacles that he has created because they didn't want him in the first place. And now he's just answering to all the extremist demands and he's not doing well. So the rune says he must identify his shadow, his dark side. He's incapable of that. Um, he may experience troubles, denials and setbacks. He may be required to pay off old debts. And it says, mend and restore. Mend and restore, Kevin. But rectification must come before progress. And I wrote a note that Kevin McCarthy is incapable of rectification. So this didn't give this perfect answer, but there's a real good chance that uh, Kevin McCarthy will be gone in the next three months. And then what does that do to Margie? We'll wait, I didn't do any runes on that because it hasn't happened yet. Um, all right, so E. Jean Carroll, who is a brave, smart woman, the trial begins tomorrow. Um, and as I said, Trump may not show up. I kind of think he won't. And I think Judge Kaplan is so smart that the judge has already pre-planned what if Trump shows up in the middle and just decides to make an entrance? And I bet they've thought of that and they probably won't let him in. But I don't know, I'm just telling you my left ear. Um, so I simply asked the runes, uh, will E. Jean Carroll prevail in her lawsuit? And the answer is yes. <laughs> I'll just tell you off, it's yes because she got the rune of partnership, which is one big X, like a big X, and there's no reverse. There's no op opposite of partnership. So some form of partnership is at hand, and that would be her lawyer and her support. Uh, it is union with the higher self, and her higher self is in a fight for vindication. 
she is experiencing a union with the divine. She is covered uh, spiritually, divinely, and she's handled herself perfectly. Unlike Trump, she has not gone out and talked. She's not Twittered. She's being very quiet. And finally, this is the good part from partnership. It signals the gift of freedom. All right, there's your answer. Uh, then I got wholeness, wholeness. Um, it's a rune of great power, wholeness. Uh, and it makes life force available to her. It's a time of regeneration down to the cellular level. I did not need to pull a third rune. E. Jean Carroll will prevail, and it'll be fun watching it. Now, if Trump, I'm just going to mention this, if Trump doesn't show up, um, E. Jean Carroll's attorney has the right to um, show his deposition, which he does not do well in depositions. Um, she has a right to show the, or that's audio, the Access Hollywood tape, I Can Grab Women by the P uh, word, and I can do anything because I'm famous. Um, so all of this can be used against him. It's going to be powerful. All right, but E. Jean Carroll will take the stand, and there will be, I think, three women who've claimed that Trump um, raped them. Are going to take the stand. They're allowed to take the stand. Uh, it's not looking good for him. All right, so Biden hasn't done the big official stand-up, nighttime, you know, whatever, uh, but he's running. Biden is running for president, and his platform is something like, finish the job. We're making progress, but we need to finish the job I'm running so I can finish the job I started. Uh, now his issues, uh, people that have doubts, are um, his age. Uh, the migrant situation has not been handled properly or well. It's unsolved. They're gonna go after him for that. Um, but essentially this is gonna be a race. Let's say, let's say I'm wrong. And Donald Trump does run because I've had my doubts. I've had my doubts whether he's going to make it to the race. But let's say we don't, we're assuming, okay, because he's way up in the polls to be the favorite, not Ron DeSantis. That this is a race of competence versus chaos. And I think they may be using that phrase. All right. All right. Here's a scary question, but I kind of had to know. Uh, because of how insane Marjorie Taylor Greene is acting, or has acted, is still acting, and is getting worse. I asked the runes, would Trump ask Marjorie Taylor Greene to be his running mate? Now, don't run to the bathroom. Stay with me. It's the gag reflex. So I got the rune breakthrough. And that's a major shift. And it's radical. And it could transform the course of a life forever. And I wrote her life. Then I got defense. And defense says a delay may be beneficial. And I'm going to insert something here that's not in the runes. That I think Trump is going to delay that announcement or who he's going to invite to be his running mate. So I think this is what this one is about. So delay may be beneficial. Do not be too eager to press forward. It just may be too soon. Uh, this is to Margie. No acting needy, Margie, or lusting. She's kind of famous for lust. Um, it's a time of waiting. So she's got to sit still. Um, but you can feel her desire <laughs> to be his running mate. And then I got opening. Opening, the rune of opening. So opening is renewed clarity or dispelling the darkness that has surrounded a part of her life. Um, she's free to receive or to give. And in, re in terms of relationships, uh, the rune says there can now be a mutual opening which she will trigger and set in motion. 
So I want to say there is a real possibility that Trump may ask Margie to be his running mate. And here's the reason. He knows that she's like a doorknob, but she's a royal doorknob. Not like the royals, but she's, um, other than her ignorance and stupidity and uh, violent nature, lies, she may be one of the most loyal people to Donald Trump on the planet. And he values loyalty more than anything. And she's a pit bull. She's, I shouldn't say that because I actually like pit bulls, but she's a fighter. She's fierce. Let me say she's like a rabid dog. Um, and I'm a dog lover, but not when they're rabid. Um, and he wants that. He wants that protection. He wants that fight. And I think he may want a woman. Uh, but then I still think he may come up with an excuse. We will see. I mean, my feeling, I keep asking, who the hell is going to run for GOP president? That's what I privately keep thinking. Um, so just a couple of tidbits that I, that I want to mention. Um, I think it's, well, I mentioned, okay, I'm looking, I mentioned that and I mentioned that. Um, there's going to be more suits with Dominion, by the way. Um, this woman, the governor of Alabama, I, I just had to mention this. She's just obnoxious. She's something out of an, an old racial movie, you know, like Mississippi Burning or something. And uh, it says Alabama governor ousts a top education official over a book's woke concepts on race. And so the article says, Governor Ivy replaced her director of early childhood education over the use of a teaching training book that Ivy said teaches woke concepts because of language about inclusion and structural racism. And you know, here's the thing about the word woke. I think uh, Ron DeSantis sort of started this woke thing using use of the woke word. And what I want to tell you is that was just a branding opportunity. Nobody could really tell you about woke from that side. If they did, they'd say it's about racism. It's about keeping our kids ignorant. It's, I mean, there's just like kind of no such thing as woke concepts. It's just normal democracy. So she, when I say what, when I read woke concepts, I want to say democratic concepts. They need to be woke needs to be replaced with democratic. So I hate her. Okay. This is so sad, but it's a story I saw from the 22nd. Mexican migrant camp tents were torched, set on fire across from Texas, across from the Texas border. And they were set, the fires were set on Wednesday and Thursday to about 25 makeshift tents at a camp with about 2,000 people. Uh, most of these migrants were from Venezuela, Haiti, and Mexico. Um, and they were near Brownsville, Texas. That's all they had were these tents. Um, so this evil continues, this horrible stuff continues. And look at, I really like Joe Biden a lot and um, will support him and vote for him. Um, but we do have this migrant problem and I don't have a solution to it. I'm just saying we need to acknowledge it and do our best. Um, and then here's something really positive. For the first time, the head of NATO visited the Ukraine. So here it says, NATO chief Jens, J-E-N-S, this is a man, Stolchenberg has definitely declared that Ukraine deserves to join the military alliance and pledged continuing support for the country on his first visit to Kyiv since Russia's uh, invasion over a year ago. Very positive, very positive. And there's lots of uh, photos and video footage with Zelensky, it's great. Um, a word about Kevin McCarthy and the debt ceiling, which everybody's talking about. I haven't thrown runes yet. Um, it's that 
Kevin McCarthy, because they, they uh, altered the debt ceiling three times for Trump, okay? Uh, but now they don't want to do it. They, so what they're doing, what Kevin is doing and the GOP are doing is they're trying to set Joe Biden up for an epic fail with um, the debt ceiling at the entire expense of every citizen in the United States and global economics. That's how filthy they are. Now, there is a rumor that uh, Mitch McConnell and Chuck Schumer are going to end, end up getting together to work it out. Uh, we will see. And I will throw runes on it, but um, it's, this, it's this covert debt ceiling um, move that's going on. It has no legitimacy to it whatsoever. It's about let, we got to get the libs. Hey, Pete, having a little stretch? Um, we got to get the libs. We got to get Joe Biden. We have to make Joe Biden look really bad. All right. Um, the other thing I mentioned earlier is that DeSantis is beginning to cave. Um, and it's just the funniest thing that Ron DeSantis has picked a war with the CEO of Disney and Disney in Florida who bring billions of dollars to Florida. All right, he's the governor and he's going after the company, the global organization that brings billions of dollars to Florida. It's pretty stupid. Um, so his decisions are very personal and they're very weird and he's traveling and he hasn't been uh, in Florida to help people with the floods. Finally, he asked the Biden administration for help and you know he didn't want to. He hates Biden. He had to, he had to just come down to earth and go, can, can you help my people? They're in like eight feet of water. I don't think it's eight feet, but, uh, and then in, was it Europe or China? Or, I can't remember which country, but he was with Casey, his little Disney princess wife. Um, and one of the reporters asked him about being so far down in the polls from Trump for the presidential run. And he like lost his, he lost it. He didn't know what to say. He was shaking his head. He didn't have a good, uh, he didn't have a good answer. And I'm like, ha like you want to run the country and you were not even prepared for that question, Ron, come on. Nobody prepared him for that question. Very emb embarrassing moment. And uh, I'll say it again. The Democrats must win the presidency, the House and the Senate for any gun control to move or take place or any possibility about women's health. That's what we need to happen to get things back a little bit, if they ever can be, in order for anything to change. So that's that's that for today. Um, boy, they kind of, the sound kind of went away. Thank you for hanging in for that. Um, good evidence, really fast. Uh, and I put it in my community section. I did a podcast uh, last week on my book, The Comics Daughter. And uh, we had such a good time that she edited it into two separate podcasts because she didn't want to cut out any of the material. Um, and it's really fun. I, I slathered that all over Twitter and we'll see what happens. And I actually did have a great hour long coffee with a woman who is from Broadway and has tons of credits, is the nicest person on the planet. And she had directed a one man show on Broadway that won a Tony Award. Now, the funny thing is that I predicted that Tony Award before even the nomination. So they directed uh, my friend, Jay Johnson, in his one man show called My Two and Only, because he's a brilliant and funny ventriloquist. Uh, but they did, a, they did some test shows out here in uh, California at the Brentwood Theater. I went, and when I came home, I wrote Jay a letter, like with paper that you mail with a stamp. 
not an email. And I said, Jay, you're gonna get nominated for a Tony Award for this show and you're gonna win the Tony Award. Keep this letter. And the night of the Tony Awards, I got a text from him because they were three hours later. And it said, um, well, he nicknamed me Spooky. Okay, that's my nickname. Spooky, I won the Tony and your letter is in my tuxedo. So she directed that uh, with her uh, partner. And we had a great coffee and talked about my creating a one woman show of The Comics Daughter, which by the way, I'm getting a lot of support in doing. So we've started that. And then here's your quote. It's by T.S. Eliot, poet. It's very short. He wrote, most of the trouble in the world is caused by people wanting to be important. I think that's very appropriate to now. We're seeing so many wannabes in Congress. Um, me, me, it's me. Um, it's me that he was really right. Uh, most of the trouble in the world is caused by people wanting to be important. I guess we're talking about hubris, ego, on and on and on. So that's it for today. Thanks for hanging. Uh, once I download this, then I'm going to make a um, Patreon. I owe you guys a Patreon. So I'm going to do that. That may not go up until a little bit later because first I download this. That can take a little while. And then I'll do the Patreon. Okay, so I'll see you later. Uh, make peace. Make good memories. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Look for something good towards the end of the week. Something good. Some good news. Okay? Bye-bye.